Look, I'd be lying if I said that Mark 18 wasn't one of my favorite guns in Tarkov right now. This thing is an absolute weapon and it's really fun to use. I recently did a video talking about how good the ammo is, but today we're going to be talking about modding and also some other considerations when choosing this gun. So stick around and enjoy. Before we get into the video here today, I do want to remind you I do stream on Twitch. The link for that will be featured down in the description below if you have any questions about today's video or you want to ask me anything while I'm live. So how do you get the gun? Well, you can actually purchase it from Jaeger after doing a quest here called The Hunter, but unfortunately you have to kill Sturman 25 times. You're rewarded with the Mark 18 being able to be purchased, a pro kill and also a weapons case. But unfortunately, besides that, you can actually purchase the gun cheaper on the flea market anyway with some people selling the gun for as low as 135,000. So let's jump straight into the budget build. Now, if you bought this thing for about 135K, all you need to do is put the M-Lock grip on there and then a scope and you're pretty much good to go. The main expense for this weapon is not just the mods, but it's mainly the ammo and the magazine. You can get this thing for about 185K with one mag full of FMJ. It absolutely destroys people. And if you think about it for the price that you're paying, unfortunately for about 185,000, you could probably go a bit better with something like an SVD, but still a lot of fun using this gun without breaking the bank. But enough about budget. You guys are using this weapon because you're absolute bowlers, massive bunch of chads. So let's get into the lowest recoil build. Now, obviously you're gonna throw on the iron sights on both the back and the front to increase that ergo by one. We'll be throwing on the 4.1 inch M-Lock guide. Now, obviously you can use something like the B25 RK1 for that best in slot ergo slash recoil, but obviously we're gonna be sticking with the RK2 here today as this is the lowest recoil build. For the pistol grip, you can get the Graal S to get the most amount of ergo. And if we look at the stock choice, we will be replacing the buffer tube for the advanced buffer tube. And for the stock, we are going to be choosing the PRS Gen 3 stock here today, as it has the best amount of recoil reduction. Now, unfortunately, you're going to be noticing that Ergo is pretty damn bad. So when I'm building this gun, usually I like to consider, especially after I put the magazine in, which weighs a fair bit, full of ammo, we'll drop that Ergo to around about 24. So I'd like to switch out the grip for something like the Magpul Mo with the butt pad as this gives you the best of both worlds. Now this gun's going to set you back about 237,000. But honestly, when it comes to recoil in this gun, it's already got so much. And if we have a look at that ADS speed, especially built with the PRS and the RK2, you can notice it's very slow. And although the reset time of that massive amount of recoil does seem quite long, Comparative to how it is when it comes stock, this is pretty manageable. But if we compare the two between something like that high recoil build earlier I was talking about, now I usually run the MK18 with a build called the Ergo King, and I usually try to bump up as much Ergo as possible. So obviously switching out that grip, the RK2 and the other choices here to try and bump up that Ergo, because that's where I think this gun really thrives, especially since the recoil is already so nutty anyway. So obviously the recoil doesn't look that much different than when I was using the RK2 build. If you compare the two side by side, you will be noticing that the Ergo build has a little bit more recoil than the lowest recoil build. And obviously it's in the name, but the apparent difference between the two is actually quite slim. And when you see the reset time, it isn't actually that much worse with the only real difference being almost about a foot extra of initial jump, but the reset time doesn't really suffer from this. So when building the MK18, I would always go out of your way to switch out the front grip to something like the forward to shift grip, because I believe this gun actually definitely favors when you have as much ergo as possible. Now, especially if you are throwing bigger scopes on top of that with a mag full of heavy ammo, you may consider switching out the PRS Gen 3, like I was saying earlier for the Magpul Mo. This gives you the best of both worlds when it comes to recoil and also ergo. But if you're going to go all out, there is a stock here that I love using, which is called the GL Shock Stock. Now, you do sacrifice a decent amount of recoil reduction, but you gain an additional three ergo, and it's also lighter as well, which actually gives you a slight advantage. Now, obviously, the Magpul Mo is going to be the best option across the board, but if you want every drop of ergo that you can get, the Fab Defense GL is definitely the way to build this gun. So you might be curious about ammo, and ammo is one of the most important choices when using this gun, but unfortunately that's where most of your cost comes. You can purchase the ammo from Peacekeeper Max for about $17 a bullet, but if you go ahead and look on the flea market, you'll see 
that bullets can be anywhere between 10 to 15 to 20,000 per round, depending on the time of the market. AP, however, can be in excess of 40,000 rubles. But if you have a look at the stats and how good this ammo really is, you'll start to understand why this round is so expensive. So I'm not really going to be talking about TAC-X here today, which is also another option for this gun. But the Lepore Magnum rounds here as well are about 788 rubles if you are on a budget. However, that low amount of pen isn't super great. Now, if you guys are actually curious about the real world application of this ammo against armor, I've actually recently done a video, which I'll link in the description down below or in the top right corner there, where we talk about how good the ammo is up against armor and also show all the different classes and how they react. I think it's really important to do your research before you buy your ammos, but most importantly, if you haven't already, there's an ammo chart down in the description. Make sure you guys grab these and use these for any single gun that you may have. I can't stress how important the right ammo will be, regardless of how much modding and love that you put into the gun. If you don't choose the right ammo, you will suffer. All right, last but not least, let's have a look at that MOA. I think one of the most slept on things about the MK18 is the fact that FMJ and other rounds such have very high muzzle velocities compared to a lot of other armor piercing rounds. Now, obviously it's outclassed by things like M995 and so on and so forth. And just take a quick look at that grouping and it starts to become very apparent where that accuracy comes from and also how dead on this gun can actually be. So I decided to compare this gun up against something like the SR25, which is also a super accurate gun with a great muzzle velocity firing M61. Now, obviously, M61 out of this gun is going to be coming out a little bit slower. So you are going to see a little bit more bullet drop comparative to FMJ from the MK. But the main difference between the two is when you are doing long distance shooting, especially over 300 to 400 meters, that MOA stat can become very, very important. If you guys don't know what MOA is, it's basically imagine a cone of impacts. And the higher the number of the accuracy stat, the larger potential cone of impacts. Now, if we look at the two side by side and have a look at that accuracy stat, the first thing you're going to be seeing on the MK18, just under underneath ergonomics, is that the accuracy is 0.57 MOA, comparative to 1.1 MOA of the SR25. But if you are doing long distance shooting, these stats actually do matter and can be the difference between a potential headshot and missing and hitting them in the thorax. Hey guys, that's it for this video. If you want to see the MK in action, feel free to swing by the Twitch or consider subscribing. If you guys enjoy this sort of content, let me know in the comments down below what gun or ammo you'd like to see me do next for any of the videos we've been working on recently. I do appreciate the love you guys have been giving me on here. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.